So we're continuing today, as you see, on our, our discussion of hupomene, which is the power to stand, supernatural endurance, not caving in, not giving up, really outlasting the devil in whatever God tells us to do. And so our, our foundation scripture is found in James 1, 3. In the King James, it says, know this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And in the literal Greek, it's a little bit more explicit. It gives more clarity. And it says, never, no, no, no this and never forget it. That the trying done by the devil to get you to cave in or proving we prove him wrong. We determine this is not our end. We determine to prove that the word works. The trying of our faith is energized by endurance, the power to stand, the power to not waver or cave in or shipwrecked our faith. So the title of my message today is Let's Fast. Everybody put a smile on your face and say, let's fast. <laughs> Glory to God. So as you know, God has instructed Pastor Dean to proclaim a fast for our body for the next 40 days. And it begins this Friday. And the fast is for, no moaning and groaning up here. The fast is for, uh, begins at six in the evening, sunset till six the following evening. Six to six, no, did I say it wrong? Six a.m., I apologize, six a.m. to six p.m., right? Starts Friday, 6 a.m. Friday, 6 a.m. Friday. I'm confused with the Jews because the Jews, I'm not confused, but the Jews fast the other way, like I said. Okay, so we're going to start our fast 6 a.m. Friday morning. Okay. Got it? 6 a.m. Friday morning till sunset that day. that day. Basically, sunrise to sunset. Okay. So, Pastor Dean has proclaimed this fast to prepare us, to prepare us for the things ahead. And so I want you to understand that during this time, we are going to focus on our spiritual growth. The, every time you go on a fast, there needs to be a purpose. You know, otherwise you're just going without food and that's a diet. Do you understand? But this is different. This is a fast, a time of fasting and prayer, a time of fasting and prayer. So it's a time to focus on our spiritual growth, to de develop close, intimate communion with the Father, okay? And then to, because God, God's going to reveal some things to you. We had a word from, from one of our intercessors on last Wednesday that when we were praying about the fast, and the word was, those of us who are participating in the fast are going to look totally different after the 40 days. Totally different. Totally different. And I believe that was a word from the Lord. And we are, not only physically, but inside. Yes. And, and we're going to accomplish some things in the spirit, in the realm of the spirit, because we are going to take that time to not only not eat, but pray. Pray for specific things. Pray for our nation. Pray for the election. Pray for things that concern this nation. And not only our nation, but the nations of the world. I can't be selfish. The nations of the world are in dire straits. It's very chaotic all over the world. And it's not getting any better, really. So we, as intercessors, as prayers, fast and we pray. And if you've never done this before, you're going to see some great, tremendous physical benefits to this. Okay? So we'll talk about all of those. But I want you to understand that, that prayer and fasting are the power twins. They go together. They go together and much power is released when we say, no, I'm not going to eat food. I am going to spend that time in prayer. Okay. So things are going to be evident in your life. This power is going to be evident in your life. Now, Jesus taught about fasting and one of the places that he did was on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6. And what he said, and you can read the Sermon on the Mount, 
He said, when you give alms, that's in verses one through four. And then he says, when you pray, that's in verses five through 15. He discusses this. And then he goes on to say, when you fast, that's in verses 16 through 18. So Jesus is giving this sermon at the very beginning of his ministry. And he's, he's saying, not if you fast, you understand the verbiage. He's saying when you fast. So in other words, he expects us to give alms, to pray, and to fast. This is required of the disciples. He was preaching on the Sermon of the Mount, on the Mountain. And so they were expected to follow this on a regular basis. And really, this is not unfamiliar to the Jews. As I said before, you know, their fast starts at the evening and goes until the following evening, uh, sunset all the way to sunset. That's how they fast. And so this began with Moses and has continued on. In fact, um, in the, this September 27th, which is just in a couple of days, uh, is Yom Kippur. And that is the day of atonement where all the Jews fast. And they fast and pray from sunset to the following sunset. That's their days. So, so this is unfamiliar to, um, to us because we don't have proclaimed fast. We don't have this on a regular basis like the Jews do on all their feasts. But I want you to know the definition of fasting, and this is, this is so good. Well, I'll get there in a minute. But I want to tell you that... Um, there were people who fasted in the Bible. And, and in fact, fasting is mentioned 70 times in the Bible. So you can study all the scriptures, but we know Jesus fasted, right? Jesus fasted himself. He went in the wilderness and, and for 40 days, he didn't eat anything. And so um, then we, we know that, that there are other people who fasted. Um, but when Jesus, let me, let me just point this out. When the Bible says that he went into the wilderness, it says that he was full of the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit. But then when he came out, came out after he had fasted those 40, 40 days, the verbiage is he was full of the power of the Spirit. Does that tell you something? So this is found in, in Matthew, um, I mean, Luke 4, 1 through 2. But... Um, there was a story in the Bible about fasting in particular, fasting and prayer. And this is found in Matthew 17, Matthew 17, um, 14 through 21. And you can read all of this, but basically the, the situation is that uh, a man brought his son to the disciples. And this son was in bad shape. The Bible says he was a lunatic, that he would sometimes cast himself into the water and sometimes he would throw himself in the fire. So he was really in a bad way. So he went to the disciples of Jesus. This dad took his son to the disciples of Jesus and nothing happened. In fact, when Jesus appeared on the scene, the father came to Jesus and said, look, look, he said, and this, this is what he said, I brought him to your disciples and they couldn't cure him. So the disciples didn't do anything with respect to this boy. And so Jesus said, Jesus said, oh foolish and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. So you see, Jesus rebuked the devil, of course, and it left. And so afterwards, the disciples came to him and said, Jesus, why couldn't we have done what you did? What, what happened? What happened there? And so Jesus taught them. See, Jesus was a little bit um, ticked off with them because they had seen him. They had followed him and they knew what to do. But they're asking, what happened? You know, we tried. It didn't work. So basically, Jesus replied, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out 
but by prayer and fasting. So basically what he's saying is that, you know, you weren't ready. You weren't ready. You weren't ready. You weren't prepared. And this was another teaching situation that we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. And see, this fast is to enable us, this fasting and praying, is to enable us to be ready for anything. Any, anything that the enemy sends at us. Because there are other things that are going to come. You understand that. We are living in the last days. We are living in very chaotic days and they're going to get worse and worse and worse. So we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared for what's coming down the pike. So during this fast, what it will do, it will strengthen you. It will strengthen you. It will enable you to be powerful and, and be a powerful threat to the devil himself. You see, and that's the way we're designed to be. It will increase your ability to hear from the Father. It will increase your ability to hear from the Father. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. It will increase your ability to walk in his ways. And it will increase your ability to be willing to do his will which is his word. So basically this fast will supercharge you. And I believe that the timing is perfect. This is why God told Pastor Dean to proclaim this fast so that we as a body and those of us who, those of you online who want to participate will be prepared. We will be spiritually supercharged so we can basically charge hell with a water pistol. Do you understand? And, and many of you are already praying. You're already in the word, but this will give you that extra boost. Do you understand? So this is going to help. So now we're going to talk about the definition of fasting. What is fasting? Well, fasting is, is, is um, mentioned in the Bible, like I said, seven, 70 times. And there are the public fast or a called fast, which is what Pastor Dean has done. He's called our body to fast and there are private fast. So the definition of a fast is to renounce the natural to renounce the natural, to invoke the supernatural. Let me say it again. It is to renounce the natural and invoke the supernatural. Another definition is to willfully abstain from natural pleasures for a spiritual purpose. You see, there's a spiritual purpose behind you denying your flesh. Do you understand that? In the Hebrew, the word fast means to put your hand over your mouth. And so in the Greek, it means to abstain from. And, and normally it is food. Normally it is food. Because what do we have the most trouble doing? Not eating. You see, we like to eat. Christians like to eat. You know, I think we justify it in that, you know, every kind of gathering we have, it usually centers around food. You know, we justify it. Well, we don't drink. We don't smoke. We don't fornicate. We don't do this. We don't do that. We don't do that. But we really like our food. <laughs> we really like our food. And I believe that's why it's such a challenge to us when we tell our body, no, you can't have that food. But I'm telling you, just the idea of it, that you say, no body, down flesh, you are not in control. Not anymore. Not anymore. Because these appetites are just habits. Do you understand? They're just habits. You train yourself. You train yourself to eat at McDonald's every day. And then if you miss a day, then what are you doing? You're craving McDonald's. You see? So, so you have to get to the point where your body doesn't control you. Your flesh doesn't control you. You control your flesh. And you say no. And of course, your body's going to rebel. You know, your stomach's rumbling. You picture McDonald's in your head. All these kind of things, which I'm going to talk about. Your body reacts because your body wants to be in control. Do you understand? But you have to say down flesh, right? So you're basically saying, God, I will deny earth to taste heaven. I want to deny earth 
to taste heaven. Now meditate on that. Think about that. You're going to deny earth, your earthly pleasures to taste the goodness of God, to taste heaven. And so this carnal nature wants to rule. You have to understand. So you have to make a decision and make a commitment. And I'm going to provide the form where you fill out between, before God, before the angels, before the devil. And you say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to commit to do this. And then you have it there in writing with your signature on it today. So praise God. Don't throw that handout away. That's what we're going to do. So... I would suggest that you um, not only fast food, but you also fast those carnal pleasures. So I've provided on your form a way where you can say, okay, this is what I'm going to fast. I'm going to fast this kind of food, but I'm also going to fast these things that I'm addicted to, like um, video games that you can't do without, or fake book. Or, or watching your favorite TV show, or watching YouTube all the time, or whatever the enemy has got his hook into you and you're addicted to, and you feel like, I can't do without this. Maybe even relationships that you know are bad for you. Whatever that is, that natural thing, we're gonna fast, we're gonna do both of them. We're gonna do both of them, food, and then, um, and then some natural things that, that you will determine and you will find that after 40 days, hey, they don't have the hold on you like they did before. And so the, the key is don't go back. Don't go back. You know, it's like the dog returning to its vomit. Yeah, because that kind of stuff, it's pretty much vomit, okay? So... If you cannot fast food and only drink liquids for the 40 days, then what you can do is you can do, which is mentioned in the Bible, and it's a Daniel fast. Now, a Daniel fast is, is where Daniel ate no pleasant bread, which what that meant is that he didn't eat bread, he didn't eat meat, and then he didn't eat sugar. Don't look at me like that. It's possible. It is possible to go without sugar and to go without bread and to go without meat for 40 days. And so um, that is called a Daniel fast. That's a modification. The thing about it is what I want you to realize is you need to do something. The Spirit of God hasn't told Pastor Dean to call the fast for you to say, uh, I'm not interested in that. Because we're a body. We're a family. So you do something. So there are some other things that you can do on the fast. For instance, uh, you could say, okay, this first week I'm only going to drink water for three days and then I'm going to have juices. Cranberry juice is, uh, is something good to drink. Or maybe on the fourth day I'm going to start eating veggies. I'm just going to eat veggies. See, the, the thing you have to understand is when you go on a prolonged fast, when you go without food for a period of time, your intestines, everything shuts down. So you can't fast for three days and not put anything in your stomach and then the fourth day go eat a steak because your body isn't ready for that. Do you understand? Because things shut down when you go on a fast, which is good. It's good because you're getting cleaned out. The toxins are being removed from your body. So you could do that or you could say, I can, okay, I, I can't do that for either health reasons or, or whatever, but I can fast one day a week, you know, from six to six. I can do that. Or maybe you can say, okay, I, that's, a, that's a little bit extreme. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast hot Cheetos and cheese or I'm going to fast Cokes, or I'm going to fast something that I'm basically love. Yeah. And so you're putting your body in subjection. Yes. Okay. You kids yes. may, may need to do something along that line. Right. So um, 
Another way, you can just say, okay, on Wednesday, I'm going to skip one or two meals. On Friday, I'm going to skip a meal. Something like that. Do you understand? You pray about it. You see what's good for you. But I want to challenge you to challenge yourself. Do you understand? Because the time that you would spend eating, you're supposed to be praying. You see? So you, you give up something natural to do something spiritual. Does that make sense? So you purpose to spend time. And let me tell you, the first three days, you know you do. You're just so hungry. But then after a while, by the sixth, seventh, eighth day, you're not hungry anymore. You're not hungry anymore. Wouldn't that be wonderful (laughs) not to be hungry? (laughs) Praise God. But anyway, um, you have to determine I'm not going to listen to my appetite because we've eaten some things that are wrong and so our body craves those things. And that's why you have to say down flesh, down flesh. And so it's important that you do both, that you you basically subdue your flesh by not eating everything you want to and also by not doing some of the natural things that you've been addicted to so you can kick the habit. So as I said before, there is a proclaimed fast, which is what Pastor Dean did, and then there's the private fast. And so the Bible has has examples of the proclaimed fast. In the Old Testament, um, the, the Judah... Um, Throughout all the region of Judah, there was a proclaimed fast, and this is found in 2 Chronicles 20, 1 through 3. King Jehoshaphat, 1 through 30 rather, King Jehoshaphat did this. He proclaimed a fast around all of Judah, and this proclaimed fast was for men, women, and children. And so what he did he is um, he told them, look, we're going to fast. We're going to fast for a period of time. And uh, in Judah, during that time, things were similar to what they are today. And this is the reason he called the fast and proclaimed the fast is because there were anti-Christian forces during that time. And so don't we have that in our world today? Anti-Christian forces that are filled with hatred and opposition to to the love of Jesus. I mean... They hate us sometimes, you know? And so what happened during this fast is there was a supernatural gift of prophecy that gave them encouragement. Well, we've already had prophetic words for this season that the rest of this year is gonna be your best year. See, so you can hold on to that. See, when a prophecy goes forth, you don't just say, oh, that's sweet. You hold on to that. You say, yes, you put God in remembrance. The word of the Lord was, this is going to be our best year ever. So we have to prepare ourselves for the best year. Do you understand? So we have to be supernaturally charged, and that's what we're doing. And then, then the people of Judah used the, the supernatural weapons of prayer and fasting to see to it that it, that came to pass. Do you understand? So there's a, a, another proclaimed fast, and that was by Ezra in Ezra 8, 21 through 23. And so uh, this fast was proclaimed so they could seek direction. Uh, see, when you are fasting, God is going to make his will clear to you. Do you understand? Because you're more sensitive to him. When you read the word, it's going to just, it's just have enlightenment. It's going to have revelation. And because you're subduing your flesh. And so um, as a result of that, Ezra was able to defeat the enemies. They had peace. They had prosperity. And then uh, remember when Jonah, remember when Jonah went to Nineveh after he had gone the other way and then went back in the belly of the whale? Remember that? It wasn't a whale. It was a big fish. Um, So we just picture a whale. That's wrong. Sometimes pictures are deceiving. But nonetheless, um, he proclaimed to them their defeat, their destruction. Well, the people of Nineveh themselves declared, proclaimed a fast. And as a result of that, then um, they were spared and they weren't defeated. Esther, we all know the story about Esther in Esther 4.16, where, where she basically saved all the Jews. Why was she able to do that? Because she, 
she told them, okay, let's, let's set aside this time for prayer and fasting for strength for me to go into the king. And so she, she did that. And what did the king do? She could have been killed if he had not re lowered his scepter and allowed her to come in. Otherwise she would have been dead, graveyard dead. But she knew her life was at stake. So she called the whole, the whole nation of the Jews to pray and fast. Otherwise, if he had not received her like that and she saved the Jewish nation, they would have all been wiped out. So that was very important. It was very important that everybody, every Jew was to pray and fast. And of course they were familiar with that and so that's what they did. There are other biblical examples of a proclaimed fast and you can study them, then out, them out in the word of God. You know, there will be other times that the Holy Spirit just tells you to fast. Yeah. You may be experiencing some physical things in your body. You may want to fast. There may be some things in your life that you're not getting clear direction for, so you need to fast. And so um, that it's, it's important that, that, that you understand that you can choose to fast or the Holy Spirit will instruct a leader to fast. If you study out history of the United States, um, Lincoln, President Lincoln proclaimed fast. And there were other men who were in presidential positions who proclaimed fast. They called it a time of humiliation and fasting. That just means humble yourself and fast. And so uh, that, that is really, really kind of exciting that our, our nation was founded and many of the men, you know, Lincoln never went to a real church, a denominational church rather, but he was a very, very godly man. And so you can read about him, but uh, there were there were private fast in the Bible. We know Jesus; he would set himself apart. And see, when he was on his forty-day fast, um, he went away in the wilderness by himself. And so uh, many of the men in the Bible went away by themselves. And when you understand some of the physical effects, it may be a good idea for you to get alone sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so um, in Acts 13, 1 through 3, we find out that the, the, the leaders prayed and fasted and then they set apart Paul and Barnabas for their, their service. They sent them out. Then again in Acts 14, 23, they ordained elders by fasting and praying. In other words, they fasted and prayed and the Holy Spirit told them which, which one to, to um, bring on as elders. You know, Paul, he fasted a lot. You know, I, I like what he says in 1 Corinthians 9, 27. He says, I keep my body under. Well, what is the best way <laughs> to keep your body under? By living a lifestyle of fasting, living a lifestyle. This, I want to encourage you. You are going to get so excited when, when you see the benefits and what it's done for you, not only your body physically, but for you mentally and emotionally and spiritually, then you're going to want to do this on a regular basis. So I would encourage you when the, the, the fast is over, the proclaimed fast is over to continue this practice, whether it's one day a week, whether it's two days a week, the early church fasted every, every Wednesday and every Friday. It's up to you. But when you find out the benefits and what it does for you, you will not want to stop and say, oh, it's, it's over, it's over, I'll never do that again. No, there, there may be another proclaimed fast for another 40 days, you know what I mean? Depending on what's going on and what the Spirit of, the, of God wants us to do. But you have to understand in your mind that fasting is not just missing a meal. It's not just missing a meal, it's not dieting. It's replacing those meals that you would normally have and spending that time, not with your friends, not goofing off, but with prayer and meditation on the word of God, you see. So you're setting yourself apart for that season, for that time, so to speak. And so uh, what you need to do is meditation, which is basically just, you know, listening to God and God's going to talk to you. God's going, your, your senses are going to be enlightened. Your senses are going to be heightened. So you're going to be able to hear him better than you have before. And, and of course, 
it, it does require time in the word because this is how, the main way he talks to you. And see, in John 6, 63, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So God wants you to receive all that he has for you. But this is taking the time to say, okay, God, I want to see you more clearly. I want to love you more dearly. I'm going to spend time with you instead of eating, instead of fellowshipping with my friends, I'm going to get alone with you. And you're, you know, you don't get a big attaboy for fasting. You know, in fact, Jesus really told the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, or his disciples don't do like they do because they have a sad face. Oh, I'm fasting. And you look so, you know, I haven't had food for several days. You know, that's ridiculous. Okay. So don't do that. And he rebuked them for that. But fasting is a commitment to abstain from food for a period of time and seek God during that time. Seek God through prayer and through the word. So how do you fast? Well, if you want to go on the full fast that we're talking about, which will truly benefit you in the 40 days, these others will benefit you too. But if you're not able to do that, like the children, but some of you adults, you know, just like Pastor Dean said, it's not going to hurt us to fast for 40 days. <laughs> you know, it's not going to hurt us. It's not going to hurt us. Um, uh, you might think, well, you know, People die after 40 days. No, they don't. Okay. <laughs> You'll make up any excuse not to do what the word of God says. You know, the mind will do that. But, but, but the, the, the fast that we're promoting, you can do the Daniel fast. You can do the partial fast like I've explained to you. But the fast is to go 40 days without solid food. So what does that mean? You need hoop on an A. <laughs> you need supernatural endurance. You need to trust God for this. Trust God for strength that you won't cave in. You won't give up. You understand. And it's good to have a partner. Good to have the family here that will encourage you, help you. So you have to drink plenty of water. This is key. You have to drink plenty of water. Your body is 87% water. So you have to drink plenty of water. You have to double up, so to speak. You have to double up. And so um, if you don't see the problem with many people, young and old, is they don't re remain hydrated. And so as a result of that foggy brain, you know, just, just, and, and it, it affects you physically. You know, it's really bad if a baby gets dehydrated. You know that those of you who are, are parents or older people, if they get dehydrated, it's not good. And it's not good for you either. Right. So what we have to do is we have to remain hydrated. We have to double up on our water. And so uh, you can have coconut water, you can have natural water, you can have mineral water, those kinds of things. You can also um, uh, have uh, natural herbal teas, not caffeine. So, you know, coffee is, is toxic. So, you know, you can do this. You can do this. And some of you who are addicted to espresso, addicted to coffee, you might have a headache because of the withdrawal of, from that. But you can do this. You can do this. This too shall pass. Um, cranberry juice is very good. Not the kind filled with lots of sugar, do you understand? <laughs> Uh, it's a cleansing agent. So cranberry juice, apple juice, or apple cider vinegar, these are some things that will help you um, uh, get through this. Do not um, drink orange juice or pineapple juice because of the acid in there. See, what your body does is when you eat, your body produces acid so it can digest the food. And so you don't want to add more acid to it. That's why as you go on the fast and you don't have any food in there, it'll take a little time for your body to realize it's not getting any food. And those acids may make you feel a little nauseous. You know, you hear that rumbling and, and may feel uncomfortable. So that's when you need to drink water. You need to drink some more water. See, because what is happening to you in your body and even people who don't pray and fast, 
they just fast. Um, there are tremendous physical benefits for doing that, do you understand? And so what it does is the things that we eat, the meat, the, the processed food, the coffee, all these things have toxins in them. And so when you deny your flesh and you say no, then what your body is doing, it is not, not having to process that. So you're basically your stomach, your intestines shut down a little bit. And then what happens is that those toxins that are in your body are released and they have to be released through your going to the bathroom. So what you have to do is you have to drink lots of water. Yeah. So you flush those toxins out of your body. And so just let me tell you that what will happen is that um, your breath will be stinky. Your tongue will coat itself after 12 hours because you can tell after 12 hours the toxins on your tongue, they're, they're being released, okay? So I know that sounds a little gross, but, you know, don't breathe on somebody <laughs> because those are toxins being released in your body. That's a good thing. We want the toxins to be released because what you have to understand is your body is repairing itself. You're getting out all this stuff. Their body doesn't have to focus on digesting the food and it can focus on other things like repairing your body. Do you understand? So um, this is a commitment. This is a commitment. You're committing to the word and you're committing to prayer. And you're saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna get along with the Father rather than eating. So, um, you know, if you're unable to do this, because of physical issues, then, then what you need to do is do a little bit. Do you understand? Or if you're a children, do a little bit. Um, so I want you to understand that fasting changes you. Yes. Good. Yes. Fasting doesn't change God. It changes you. And it puts you in a position to receive from God. And let me, let me just use this illustration. You know, if I have a big water tank and then I have a pipe running to the, my irrigation system and, and that pipe gets clogged with gunk and all kinds of stuff, then I'm just going to have a trickle of the water coming out of my pipe to water my plants. Do you understand? Yeah. So um, what you have to realize is that um, if this is what happens in our physical body, if we don't flush out some things, then the blood can't go through our arteries because of all the gunk that we eat and the arteries get clogged and that's why people have strokes and that's because the blood can't go through, do you understand? So what happens is as we go through life, our, our pipes are clogged. Do you understand? This is what Jesus meant when he told his disciples, the reason you couldn't cast this out basically is your, is your pipes are clogged. Yeah. Yeah. You see, what are our pipes clogged with? All kinds of toxic foods, but also all kinds of entertainment. Yeah. Spending your time on things that have no eternal purpose. Yeah. You know, all your fake book and your yeah. video games and all this stuff that's just basically a waste of time. What you're doing then is clogging your pipes. Right. Yeah. Do you understand? And you're going to only have a trickle yeah. coming out yeah. of what you need from God. So fasting is like Drano. Yes. What does Drano do? Like you see the commercials, it goes in there and eats out all that gunk and clears the pipe. And so that's what Jesus was telling his disciples. Look, you haven't prayed, you haven't fasted, your pipes are clogged. Jesus' pipes were not clogged. That's why he could go in and say, out. And that devil left immediately. Do you understand? Do you understand how important it is to keep your pipes clear <laughs> and free from gunk and other things of the world? And distractions, food and other distractions. So I, I believe, you know, it's time to set apart this time to eat something different than what you've been eating before, like drinking water and spending time eating the word. Isn't that what Jeremiah, Jeremiah uh, 15, 16 says? 
I see your word and I did eat them. I mean, he had such a revelation of what the word would do for him, not only mentally, spiritually, physically. See, when you fast, this is going to affect you spiritually. It's going to affect you mentally. It's going to affect you physically. It's going to affect you emotionally because you're not going to be so uh, emotional. (laughs) It's going to affect you financially. It's going to affect you in every area of your life. That's why it's so important to embrace this and to do this. And so... One doctor, a medical doctor called fasting, you know, and that's, that's a big thing with many people to go ahead and doctors telling people to fast, but there are physical benefits to fasting. And what he calls this is a um, operation without surgery because it, he says it reattunes, relaxes and purifies your system. Reattunes, relaxes, and purifies your system. And if you've ever been on any kind of detox or liver cleanse or, or colon cleanse, you know that after you do that for a period of time, you kids have never done this, but it, you feel much better. Yeah. You, feel much, you feel clean on the inside, if that makes sense to you. So why should you fast? Well, there are many reasons. And I've written some of them down. Fasting will create spiritual disciplines. And see, what you're going to do is you're going to spend more time in the Word and in prayer. So don't stop after the fast is over. Do you understand? You'll, it, fasting will increase your spiritual capacity. Fasting will enable you to receive clear, sober thinking. Fasting will purify your heart and mind. See, what you're doing is you're getting out all the toxins in your body, but also in spending time in prayer, the Holy Spirit will talk to you and show you some toxic things in your heart. Unforgiveness, bitterness, rejection, hate. So you're cleaning your, your inside, your physical body, but you're also cleaning your heart. Let's go on. Fasting will develop a hunger and thirst for more of God. It will uh, enable you to lose excess weight, improve your physical health, cleanse your body of toxins, develop greater intimacy with God. I like this one. You'll have more energy. Praise God. You won't need those five hour powers. You can just fast. Um, Receive healing. Fasting will increase the retention of what you hear. Your brain will be clear. Your memory will improve. Fasting, Fasting again cleanses your heart of toxins. It's self humbling. You know, you're not getting a big attaboy for your fast. This is between you and God. Do you understand? You'll have a more effective prayer life. You'll have peace and confidence. You'll have strength, listen to this, to overcome temptations. Strength to overcome temptations. Better sleep. Able to control your emotions. You'll look at life differently. And you know what else? You'll look at food differently. You will be calmer and less frustrated be more self-confident, less worry and anxiety, break habits of drugs, cigarettes, alcohol, lust, and porn, to name a few. And you will break spiritual bondages. David said in Psalm 35, 13, I humbled my soul with fasting. Again, you're telling your body, your body, body, you're not number one. You're not number one. You're not going to control me. So what happens when you fast? When you fast, no longer will your life be centered on food and you will be delivered from toxic habits. You know, there are some people who eat to live and some people who live to eat. And I was one of those. I mean, I like to eat. And I remember taking the CPA exam, you know, probably the most important exam I was taking at that point in my life. And I was sitting there working the problems, thinking about what I was going to have for lunch. 
just totally consumed with food. Um, so you have to understand that not only does your digestive system get a rest, but your central nervous system gets a rest when you fast. And because it's emptying all that stuff that's in there, and you're not putting other solid foods in, then you feel clean on the inside. You feel clean on the inside. And, and as I said, the energy that you had for, that you used to digest the food, because we all know this. This is why when we eat a big meal, what happens? Everything goes to our stomach to process that food, and so we feel groggy. So we need a siesta after we eat. You understand? Because we can't think clear because of that. Um, so uh, that frees up your digestive system to, and that energy to go to other places. Um, it normalizes your metabolism. Yes. It normalizes your metabolism. Um, and so after the third or fourth day, it's a heightened state of consciousness. Like you're aware, more aware of what's going on. But remember, you have to double your intake of water. You have to drink lots of water, which means you have to go to the bathroom, which is a good thing because you're flushing out all those toxins. And so your mind becomes sharp and your thoughts are clear. And, and the thing about it is what you have to understand is that when you do, when you do fast, uh, especially those first three or four days, everything looks good. Everything looks good. And so you try to avoid looking at McDonald's. You try to avoid, because even if you don't like McDonald's, it sounds good. Like those French fries. I mean, you have visions dancing in your head of that kind of food. Um, so you may get a little lightheaded. And of course, like I said, you have that bad taste in your, in your mouth. And, and I think this is the reason why many people went away to themselves because you can, you can become a little irritable. Yeah. You know, you can become, but you have to control that. You know, you have to control that. Um, and so um, you, your body is, is that habit of eating. And so you're controlling that habit and you're saying no. And so... After, after a period of time, then you're not hungry anymore. You're not hungry anymore. And um, you'll be glad. You'll be glad that you told your flesh no. You know, in Isaiah 58, this is the scripture on fasting. And you can read it. You can read Isaiah 58 because it, it kind of tells you the, the things that will affect you when you do fast. Um, it says... In there, basically, you'll be released from things that are holding you back. If you read Isaiah 58, so just put that down to read when you go home. It says heavy burdens will be broken if you have a heavy burden. Um, you'll be free from oppression. Um, bad habits are going to be broken. Bad habits are going to be broken. Um, and um, you'll, you're going to receive divine revelation. These are some of the things that Isaiah 58 talks about. And then it says your health will spring forth speedily. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And your prayers will be answered speedily. Um, you will rise out of obscurity, it says. And, and it says you, all your needs will be met regardless of the economic conditions. It, it just builds your faith. And so it's important for you to read that scripture. It's important for you to listen to this CD or, or um, tape or, or YouTube video over and over again, because what you have to do is you have to be encouraged that this is going to benefit you because the devil will tell you it's not doing anything, but you have to, you have to understand that, that yes, the benefits are worth paying the price to tell your body, no way, Jose. So if you do have physical issues, you might need to check with your doctor before you, you embark on a, a 40 day, uh, no food fast, but, but really what you're doing during this time is you're committing to get your flesh under. You're committing to get your flesh under control and focus on God. See, it's not just a diet, getting the flesh under control. Your focus is going to be on God and his word, spending time in the word, spending time in prayer. 
And so what we have, instead of, you know, eating or watching TV, you're going to pray. You're going to pray for the nations. That's why I've given you sample prayers for you to pray. Because you need to expect to experience the supernatural because you will. You will expect, you will receive the supernatural. You will ex- will it, uh, receive supernatural direction. And so um, as you confess God's word, you will, will, will be more in tune to the Holy Spirit and in your day-to-day activities. And you will be doing what God tells you to do. You will be acting and saying what God tells you to do and say. And, and you have to believe God is directing my every step. He's directing my every step. So let's go and look at our handouts. You've filled out the power to stand handout that we just went over. But also, I want you to look at your commitment form. This is a spiritual discipline for you to go ahead and uh, make this commitment. Now, this is between you and God. Now, Pastor Dean has called the fast. He expects us all to do this. But I've given you the opportunities to do it various ways. But I want you to do this when you go home today and actually fill in these blanks. Today, September 22nd, I commit to renounce the natural pleasures of food. So if you're you're a child and you're going to renounce or you're going to give up uh, hot Cheetos and cheese or pizza or what Cokes or whatever, uh, adults, teens, maybe some some stricter things like you're going to go without food for three days or for the full 40 days, you're going to go without solid food, whatever it is, you write it down. You're going to go on a Daniel fast without sweets. You're going to go without bread and you're going to go without meat. And then the second part of this commitment is to renounce carnal habits or carnal distractions. And I've put a few down for you, uh, such as TV, um, computers, the news, uh, YouTube, fake book, computer games, unhealthy relationships. And I've given you five spaces to put that in also. And then at the bottom it says, I do this in order to to evoke spiritual power in my life and spend that time in prayer and study of the word. So this is something private that you do for you as directed by the Holy Spirit. And then again, you're saying, God, I deny earth to taste heaven. So what I want you to do is to go ahead and sign it and keep this with your notes as a reminder of the commitment that you've made. See, once you commit before God then this is a true commitment. Don't go back on your commitment. And then, as I said, this is a time of prayer and getting in the word. So I've given you prayers for our government and for the nations that you can pray. And then what's important during this time is for you to do what it says in Romans 8, 26 and 27, to pray for uh, the nation, our nation and the nations of this world in tongues. Pray in tongues because as this scripture says, you are praying the perfect prayer when you do that. Now, the last handout is fasting confessions. You know, you, it's important that you, you, you make these confessions out loud. You know, you're saying basically what God says. You're making declarations. You're, you're building up and being aware of what you have committed to. So there's a whole page on the front and then there's a whole page on the back. And again, I would encourage you to read Isaiah 58 the, in various translations because King James, it's a little bit complex. But if you could read it in other translations where it talks about the fast that God has called us all to participate in. So I really believe that, that if you commit to do this and we as a body, whatever portion of the fast that you commit to do, it is going to bless you. And just as that prophetic word was, was, you're going to look differently than you look today after this 40 day season that you've set apart, that you want to fast, that you want to, uh, subdue your flesh, say down flesh and, and be more sensitive and in tune to the spirit of God. 